Senator Roger Chamberlain, chair of the Senate Education Committee, is promoting measures to improve how kids learn to read, protect kids from social media algorithms, and he's looking into alleged fraud in a nutrition assistance program. He joins me now. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good to see you. So you've said that the focus of the Senate's supplemental education bill is literacy, and to that end, it would direct $30 million to improve reading proficiency among elementary students. Mm -hmm. How will this be accomplished? Well, it's about $31 million. We have five pieces to the legislation. It's nine pages, incredibly focused and targeted. One is to uh, uh, get professional de de development uh, stuff to the, to the teachers at no cost to them. We didn't want to do any mandates, just put the money out there. Teachers were shortchanged, a lot of teachers were shortchanged in their teacher prep. They weren't, they weren't being taught, they weren't taught how to teach kids to read. So thousands of teachers were left out in the cold, shortchanged, and then hundreds of thousands of kids were not uh, learning how to read. Teachers has, has expressed that to me, superintendents, parents. So this, uh, that's the biggest part of the bill. Then we uh, put some other uh, resources in there to remove some mandates um, and uh, also money for regional centers so that they can help support rural, rural uh, districts with that effort as well. So uh, we already have some things in law, uh, so we don't have to do that, but we need to get our teachers up to speed and they've been very supportive, bipartisan support. So getting the teachers up to speed, uh, this state would use this program that's called L-E-T-R-S, mm -hmm. Letters, Language Essentials for Teachers of Reading and Spelling. And I Googled it quickly, and many, many states are implementing this to improve reading. Uh, <coughs> your bill provides funding for this specific training. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. It's, it's to allow teachers, uh, give grants to teachers to take it at no cost to themselves and no cost to the districts. Is targeted, focused because, uh, look, 60% uh, of the about 60% of the kids in Minneapolis, St. Paul cannot read at grade level. Many of them are just Ill, can't read at all. Um, statewide, that's 40% that can't read. The trend has been down for the last uh, nine years. It's been going down. It's been getting worse. So uh, the focus on literacy is nothing else matters, right? You can't do math or science without it. And if you're um, having problems reading. You don't want to go to school, there's behavior problems, there's mental health problems. 74, 75% of the uh, people in prison are, are uh, only reading in fourth grade. So it's a big deal. It's, it's, nothing else matters and we've been getting worse for over the years. So time to change and give the teachers help. As I understand it, many of the teacher training programs in colleges and universities <clears throat> do not really teach teachers how to read. Is there a way that this legislation can encourage those th the teachers to be to ensure that they get training I read teachers saying you know how much more they understand about how kids learn to read and therefore can help them learn to read better well it's one of the great tragedies here and I don't know how it happened but 10 years ago in put in statute more than 10 years ago put in statute that if you're teaching if you're going to teach elementary ed you had to get science of reading and that's what this letters is. It's science of reading. Well, we had a teacher licensing board and the current Pelsby board in charge of licensing was supposed to enforce the statute and ensure those schools were getting those things to the teachers that want to be teachers. And they were supposed to test these teachers to make sure they had it. Obviously they failed. The system failed the teachers, they failed the kids, and that needs a change. Now, to your point, more focused, they're already talking about it. I've talked to people in, in the K-12 area, in the uh, higher ed area. They are meeting, they're talking about it. The governor is committed to working with the colleges to uh, uh, address that, that very issue. Now, you mentioned suspending some things, and uh, one thing the bill does is for six years, the world's best workforce, which was <coughs> developed in 2013, um, your bill would suspend that program. How come? Well, one of our goals uh, in the last two years has been to, you know, stabilize the schools after two years of chaos, uh, give them time to catch up, and no mandates. Last year we were really good at uh, preventing almost all mandates, and we didn't do anything unless we got some work with the, uh, the organizations that's uh, up here lobbying for the schools. So no mandates. This relieves 
a huge burden on the schools. No district, no educator likes world's best workforce. It's a lot of work, a lot of paper, and it has not resulted in any positive outcomes. We can see that because reading scores continue to drop. That came along in 2013, 2014 implemented, reading scores are going down. So there's no correlation between doing all that work that they don't want to do, that they don't need to do, and a positive outcome. So that's why we're, we're dropping it. That's why we want it to go away. Uh, every district would love to see that disappear because they don't need to do it. It's not working. It's not helping. One last question before we move on. Uh, your DFL colleagues, while applauding these efforts at literacy, mm -hmm. are saying that with a $9 billion budget mm -hmm. surplus, mm -hmm. more should be invested <coughs> in students and in teachers. Mm -hmm. Should more be done? They've been investing billions and billions and billions and billions and tens of billions for many years. Literacy is dropping. The achievement gap is widening. I'm focused on results, targeted results. That's our focus, targeted results. Reading matters more than anything else. Kids come out of special ed, kids aren't behavior problems and, and disciplinary problems. This has got ripple effects way up. Now, driven by parents, educators, bipartisan, yes, they want more money, but we funded them with a lot of money last year, one of the biggest increases in 15 years. So uh, I, was, I sometimes wonder what would they do, what would be the argument if there was no surplus? They got $3 billion of Fed money last year, we funded them heavily, we didn't give any mandates. <clears throat> We're focusing on the most important thing for kids and for parents and for educators, reading. Let's talk about a bill that you've been talking about for a couple years, and it's kind of changed over time. It's making headlines now. It's the culmination of, of efforts to protect children from the negative impacts of social media. In this case, the bill prohibits social media platforms from using algorithms that target young people. How could this work? Well, it gives a cause for action for parents, right? So um, technology is good. A lot of good benefits to technology. But we have to know how to use it properly. I will. I have said this from the beginning. These organ. There's a lot of proof for this too. Not just research, but people who worked in the industry. In the Facebook uh, documents that were released, these corporations, these businesses, know what they're doing. They have intentionally targeted children and adults to monetize their attention. When you do that, they get addicted, and that's how they make money. By uh, by getting your attention, keeping it, and then selling ads and selling the data. That's how they make their money. They've done it deliberately and intentionally. This is no different than giving a kid uh, uh, a pack of cigarettes, keys to the car, uh, a bottle of booze. It's no different than doing that and saying, do what you like. This is dangerous stuff. The research shows it. It has to be used properly and monitored properly. We protect kids across this country and in this state from a lot of bad stuff, rightfully so. This is done intentionally and it's free market stuff, but I tell you what, when you're selling something that is intentionally, knowingly harming somebody, it's got to stop. So that's what this is. It causes, gives parents a cause of action to sue. And then finally, your committee is in the midst of a set of hearings that's looking into the alleged fraud that uh, potentially occurred in a federal program that provides funding for nutrition <coughs> assistance to children in need. Uh, these programs are overseen by the Minnesota Department of Education. What is the goal of these hearings? The goal is to find out what broke at MDE, at the Department of Education, and fix it, purely and simply. We did not focus our, our target our questions and investigation outside of the uh, department. The legislature has authority to have oversight. That is our realm, and that is what we're doing. The taxpayers were harmed. People who were supposed to get food were harmed. The system was harmed. To find out what broke and fix it. To date, it has not been real successful. I have, I'm drawing some of my own conclusions from the three hearings that we've had so far. Um, they said the process worked. Well. 250, 300 million dollars, poof, gone. Well, uh, if that's working, probably failure is a billion dollars stolen. But uh, there's a problem there. We're focusing on MDE and we want to um, help them out. Senator Roger Chamberlain, thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.